Hi crafters! Today we are going to make this tie the knot uh, greeting and obviously you could put birthday or whatever you wanted down here. When I first started I really wasn't sure what kind of card I was going to make. <laughs> I just knew I wanted to emboss and, and do ink blending and then I thought oh you know I haven't made a wedding card in a long time so I'm going to do this one. So super easy card even though we have a couple of techniques going in it. Um, I didn't plan on using three stamp sets however my first stamp set the one I originally um, had wanted to use is by Ser seriously? Really? Oh. I'm going to turn that off. That's my friend Michelle. So Michelle, when you watch this video, that was you calling. Um, it's by Joy Claire. It's called Hugs and Smiles. I just loved this image and so I knew that I wanted to use that. So this was what I started with and was my main uh, focus on that card. However, when I got that part embossed, uh, this was boring down here. It had a little hole. So I thought, all right, my favorite things, uh, is it circle scribbles? Yeah, circle scribble flowers was so similar to the images that I used. So I pulled this stamp set out to use it for filler in the bottom. So that's how I ended up with those two. And then I just love the sentiments. Obviously, I had to have a stamp set for the sentiment, but I, I love the font and stuff in this set by Mama Elephant, uh, Bountiful Blessings. So, ended up using three stamp sets, but it'll be fun. So I am going to use my Misty. I do have some extra magnets on order because it's really easy to use your Misty when it's just down here in the corner. Really easy to line up and have everything in place. Um, well, it's easy to use it anywhere, but the problem is I'm going to use Versamark, and this is a big image and really going to be sticky, and it's going to tend to pull that um, cardstock up. So I found this little baby magnet. I really don't know if it's doing any good or not, but I put it down there until more of these come in, because two come with the Misty tool. So I've put the stamp where I want it to be. I'm going to close my Misty. Make sure it's stuck. See how it pulls that paper because it's sticky. So what this is going to allow me to do, since I'm using Versamark, it's going to be super sticky so it might be a little challenging, but um, it's a really detailed stamp. So I'm going to want to stamp it twice in Versamark to make sure that I get a good coverage. And I forgot my powder tool make sure it only the um, embossing powder only sticks where I want it to. So I'm going to stamp this up really good in Versamark. And there's a cushiony foam under here underneath this which also helps for a really nice crisp image. I'm going to try to hold that cardstock in place. Now the beauty of this tool is I can re-stamp uh, whether it's verse mark ink or whatever and it's going to go exactly where it was so I'm not going to have to worry about lining it up I'm not going to have image you know lines that are over each other that's the beauty of this tool and I love it I'm going to move that off and move that aside now they are coming out with a mini misty I suggest you just get the original because it's not that small there's only like a twenty dollar difference and um we're only talking i want to say an inch or two difference and frankly i think that would be pretty small so if i were you and i was going to invest in the misty i would go ahead and get the original they're uh because they're a little pricey oh let me finish that thought in a minute if you heat your heat tool up uh, for 10-15 uh, seconds before you put it on your paper. Um, your paper supposedly is supposed to less wa uh, warp less, so let's see. This little heat tool, I have several, has become my favorite and when it first came out I made fun of it because it just looks like a hair dryer. It's the uh, Ranger one, uh, Tim Holtz craft tool and it heats up so fast anyway and it's so quiet and it doesn't blow hard 
my other heat tools blow really hard and so stuff blows all around sometimes with it so I really like this one all right now granted I could have done the others at the same time but I didn't want to <laughs> but you could I could have inked up the whole thing on the misty and Actually, I don't even really need to use the Misty for this next one because I can see right where I want to put it. It's um, a pretty simple image. It's so small. So let me kind of heat tool it down here. On the sample card that I made, I had done all of the ink blending and everything, and it was after the fact that I decided to add um, a little grouping of these circle flowers. So... Now I'm going to attempt to do it in the correct order. Just want to put three down here. It's so hard to see on this white paper as well. stem here. Let's get one going there. And there. I'm not going to bother with that third one. We're going to pretend like it doesn't need one. And put this on. A little more white embossing powder. Now we're going to do some ink blending and most people are used to just doing that with like a distress ink and uh, we're going to use uh, Simon Says Stamp inks and I did not do a good job with my blending tool. Oh my. Not with my blending tool. You know I can't talk and do something at the same time. <laughs> I meant my powder tool. Okay, that's going to have to be good enough. Otherwise, my video is going to be like a half hour long and you guys are going to kill me. So, let's heat these up really quick. Um, what I was saying is most people think about doing ink blending with um, <clears throat> distress inks. You can do it with other inks as well. There are some that just they dry way too fast and so you can't get the blending but these from Simon Says Stamp they're a lot like the, sh the Hero Art shadow inks and so it takes a few minutes for it to totally absorb into the paper and that gives you time to do some additional blending so I'm using Hollyhock, Simon Says Stamps and Sunkiss. I just loved these colors get these out and while I have a million of the big ink blending tools I'm in love with the little mini round ones I suggest you get those um, I have my craft mat down stamp up real good and start off and blend it on I'm gonna kind of mix them as I go because there was there was a section where I really wanted more orange So I'm he oh that was not good. I was trying to hurry. So you can see this big blob of you know you really are supposed to start off the mat and um, circle on so that you don't get big blobs like that. So let's see if I'm going to be able to get it out. Totally my fault trying to hurry. This um, is a little darker than my original one that I made. I'm not sure I'm going to be happy with that. 
But it is my own fault, isn't it? I want these a little darker. What you can do with these, when you do want some of your images a little darker, you can go back and you can keep layering these inks just like you can with a Distress ink. Um, so like I wanted those uh, little flowers right there to be a little darker, so I went on and just went right on to them and uh, made them a little darker. With these being circles, where this I got a big blob because it was white, but this kind of lends itself to hiding it a little bit because of that the image. Put a little more orange over it. Yeah, this is definitely darker. Okay, put that down there. I stress when I feel like I have to hurry. Now, I'm going to emboss again. And so you could leave this dry overnight or um, I'm just going to try to heat set it because um, when I go to put the embossing powder on for the sentiment, I don't want it to stick anywhere all over the, the card base or this uh, base that I'm working with. So you want to make sure that, um, as I was saying, this ink... When you stamp with it just normally, like it's not a pigment ink, it doesn't take that long to dry, but it does take a, a, a few seconds, I'm not even going to say minutes, to kind of absorb into the paper, and so that is why we can blend with it, and, um, oh, my husband's home, so he's, you're going to hear him in the background, this is going to have so many noises in it, and so let's see, I'm going to try, so I just do a little test, put it here and see if it, oh, it's stuck still, so I'm going to wipe that off. It's kind of how you can tell whether or not your paper will be okay to put more on. Let me dry it just a little bit more right down here. Use my powder tool. And where's my sentiment? I just here. Walk. Take that off. I think I used my misty when I put it on the last time. Ooh. Just okay, doing a video, just a minute. Yeah, he just came home with dinner. <laughs> wow. And my editing skills are not good enough that you guys are gonna be able to not know all of this was happening. Would it look good there? I didn't really quite leave enough room for it. You can see how much room is left is on this original one. I think that I may have caused a problem. Well, we're going to do it. What will be interesting is whether or not you guys even ever get to see this video. So, stamp that first mark down. Using uh, Judkins metallic silver for the greeting, and hoping that it's dry enough. I think that's pretty good. I should have used a bigger container. this up and we're on the home stretch um, if you're new to embossing when you see it turning shiny you know it's done love that and then I already had a uh, a2 card cut just your standard A2 cut with a vertical fold. So it can be a vertical orientation. Now these new sequins, I am in love with them. Let me put this down because Jelly Bean Soup came out with sequins that are pretty sticky. 
you know how we're always fighting with putting our uh, sequins down with glue and all of that. So I bought them in every color that they had. And they were inexpensive. I want to say they were only like $1.99. And so, so easy to use. Just lift them up and boom. So I'm just going to put some of these on here randomly. Oh, that one came off of its sticky thing. And one more. Ah! Come back! The question is, where do I want it since my spacing is different? Here? Yeah, that's good enough. So there we go. So here is a wedding card with embossing and ink blending with regular ink and not using distress ink. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up and I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. Be watching for a lot more cards. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. Bye.